YouTube, Jason here representing Raptor Reptiles and I'm here to bring you guys another colony update on all the bubbas that we have. Um, as you can see we pretty much hit max capacity for where we live right now but um, over the winter break I made four new cages. These are pretty much going to be for my males and uh, holdbacks that I'll be getting since I did uh, successfully breed uh, Mellow and Big Bubba so the egg should be hatching at the end of February. I don't know the exact date and uh, we'll keep you guys updated with those. Um, so in this video I'm just pretty much going to go through each Bubba, their um, genetics, you know how big they are and pretty much how they're uh, developing and uh, you know their personality and all that and I'll give you guys a couple little tips so so we'll start off with my littlest all right so this is big boy we got him from Tamara over at rainbow bearded dragons he's a normal scale double hat hat for a hypo and hat for trans and uh, he's actually in pretty much a head and body shed his extremities, you know, his legs, paws, his tail, they've all shed. So if you guys go back to when I bought him, you could see how dull he was when we got him. And now that he's got a couple more sheds under his belt, he's pretty much tripled in size. He is 200 grams right now. Um, he's got the nice oranges coming in, so I'm hoping that on his whole body and his head that orange is really going to start to take over now uh, i'm really hoping that that orange is really going to start popping you know on his body and on his head over here but he's extremely tame dragon um he's growing at such a fast rate though because when i got him he was about the same size as diablo and now he's about 60 grams bigger so we got to keep an eye on them right now just because they're both males but they seem to be getting along okay since they've been together so long I noticed that when dragons have been to together for a while they almost start to develop a tolerance for each other they're uh, I don't know they become they just learn each other you know they figure out who the alpha is you know obviously he's the alpha so Diablo kind of just you know minds his own business you know stays away from him he doesn't really bug him at all so that's big boy all right guys this is Diablo he's from KP critters and he is a hypo trans dunner and uh, he's pretty red unfortunately he's just about to be through with his uh, body shed here so as you can tell like right underneath here like on his tail you can see the reds that are really coming in he's like a real nice you know high orange red like fluorescent color because he is a hypo trans um, really rare you know nice looking dragon he just actually turned six months old but Diablo he's about 140 grams at six months so big boy at five months is 200 so it's a pretty big difference like I said in my video like how big will your bearded dragon be well he's showing three morphs right now he's a dunner hypo and trans so his genetics are a little bit weakened but nonetheless he's super healthy I mean you can see he keeps gaining um, additional sheds um, he's eating like a horse so he just probably not gonna be as big or he may just be growing at a slower rate um, but that's him he's real great you can even see like under his beard he's got like that real you know see-through scales because he's trans especially through the sides here he's got that awesome dunner beard where all the you know scales kind of go every which way that's a tree he's got the big hands um, uh, KP did a great job producing this guy even like he's got really nice white underneath his eyes it's almost like kind of like a war paint down there so he's go he'll be one of my uh, more exotic you know breeder studs so I'm really looking forward to him you know in the next six months to see how much bigger he'll get and see how he's doing but uh, you know he's doing great here 
so they're getting along like I said you know even with the you know weight difference but I'm, I'm more experienced so if you want to introduce new dragons you have to keep a close eye on them at least for a couple weeks see how they react to each other you know see if one will submit to the other um, you know because they like to establish dominance you know when they're little too they get aggressive with food so you just got to make sure they're you know always food in there and keep a really close eye on them so that's Diablo all right now this is Salem also bought from KP critters um, he is 10 months old and he's 370 grams and oh, let me just get him down from here try and get him comfortable so you guys can see he's he's actually seen some females as you can tell by this really dark beard now that he's hit his 10 month mark you know he's at that healthy weight say above 350 grams he, he probably could breed right now so you could see because he is also a translucent oh so let's start with his genetics he is a translucent leatherback 66 percent possible het whiplet so i don't have any whiplets right now to eventually prove that out to but i will be picking one up from uh, kp probably towards the end of the month so that's his beard right there so like you can see that big dark beard so if your dragon does that you know that's probably it that could be a sign of either you know see how he's bobbing his head that's just a breeding sign him trying to communicate like i said i have a bunch of dragons here so come here buddy so i can't see it so i want to get you a close-up because you got like he said got such a cool He's got such a cool color to him. So when they breed, we're breeding the whiplets. You're trying to get like some really dull colored ones because when they would breed with the whiplets, it would make them like that real nice ivory color. Now people are experimenting, trying to put color into them. So I believe both of his parents were really, you know, I'm gonna guess they were dull and, uh, and white. So then when it hit the trans, hit the scales, it made it almost like a, um, it made it almost like a green you know see-through color so and then obviously he's got these real nice orange stripes that go all the way down his back here also really healthy eater he also has you know the leather backs uh, technically I guess you could call it a morph but it's not gonna do much just a reduction of the scales so it's kind of hard to keep me here right now because he has seen some females and he is ready to breed but that's just a quick update on him obviously he's doing great and another you know spectacular dragon unique from uh, KP so I stick with him a lot he seems to know what he's doing very helpful you know good breeder high quality animals and I've had no issues with any of the animals that I bought so I'm actually about to buy a third one from him so that's Salem this is my girl Juniper she's also about 10 months old and she weighs about 352 grams so she's pretty much at that point where she may start ovulating shortly and I purchased her from Excalibur Dragons and if you look at my earlier videos I said you know she was very aggressive um, pretty much as a juvenile and baby so I had to actually separate her she was causing a lot of issues with the females but I see I have really worked with her a lot and she is now probably one of my favorite and most tame dragons and like I said she's got such a deep orange color to her she did have some real nice blue bars are starting to fade out now just think she's getting more saturated with uh, the orange but nonetheless a beautiful dragon great eater tame so like I said if your dragons are a little bit aggressive you always can work with them and get them where you need them to be so never give up on them and if you do see that they are aggressive and you are housing multiple dragons together you have to separate them it's really not an option because one of them will get hurt these pretty much they are reptiles and they can be aggressive they do have teeth and nails so just please remember that just because I'm doing it doesn't mean that you have the right amount of experience to know what you're doing so I've had my fair share of mistakes and I've learned so just uh, heed my warning with that if you want to have multiple ones together and I'll maybe do a whole video on that to come but yeah she loves her uh, dubias 
And she definitely, she got that nice little belly. She's not too fat, not too skinny. She's just doing great. So I can't wait to give her, you know, maybe another six months and see who I'm gonna pair her up with. So that is Juniper. Oh, and uh, Juniper here, she is a hypo Italian leather bat. Real high color quality. All right, this is Lily. I purchased her at a reptile show from Dachu Dragons, and she is a hypo normal scale pet trans. And you could see she has no reduction really to her scales. She has real nice side spikes on her over here. She's got a really unique uh, face, but I also had to work a lot with her. She was just extremely like wild rambunctious when I got her you know always puffing up never tried to bite me or anything scratching me up a lot so I have to trim her nails you know keep them short but she's actually behaving right now maybe because she knows she's on camera she wants to get that good side but uh yeah she's uh she's also got a real nice saturation here under her beard so that's a plus that she actually developed you know after I received her so the true colors are not going to show till they're full grown so just remember that don't get discouraged and she's actually got also some nice blue barrings on her and what really causes the blue here is when they're hypo it's a lack of dark pigment so it's going to make it show almost like a blue instead of it being like a darker brown or black color um, and those are getting more pronounced so I think she may end up with some real nice you know tiger stripes and a lot of people are going for that trying to see how big they can get the tiger stripes so she'll be a nice um, mix when I uh, you know decide to breed her and uh, she's about seven months old and 250 grams just about give or take so yeah really healthy but uh you know every time I even go put my hand in the tank to get her she's always really skittish at first I don't know if she had a bad experience as a baby or she has some fear for humans but I'm working with her every day we try and hold it for 20-30 minutes and she really likes I must see if I could get her to shut her eyes but she really likes to be hit right right behind her eyes there but I seem to want to comply but I noticed when they start moving around a lot, let them move a little bit. Don't try and restrain them too much, let them get comfortable. And then right here, right behind the eyes, there's some little soft spots here. They really like when you uh, pet it and sometimes they'll even, you know, shut their eyes, which is kind of, in my opinion, a, you know, a sign of trust where they don't have to be in high alert and they trust you. But, you know, see, she'll try and move around a little bit and I'll kind of let her move. and get her hands comfortable but you know you just have to work with each one every day but she's got even some real nice you know white spots she's really a beautiful dragon you know I got her first steal so that's Lily with the red beard this is Mandarin she was also she was the first dragon I purchased from Tamara over at Rainbow Bearded Dragons and she is also a hypo Italian leatherback. She's got nice oranges and you know, her tail is, as you can see here at the end, it's going into a shed. Um, her face just shed up here by her eye. Uh, and Mandarin here, she's about nine months old. Um, one of my most sweetest dragons, but I don't know what it is. I can't get her to grow anymore. She's kind of peaked out at uh, you know, she's kind of just holding steady at 250 grams. You know, she's still eating, um, still active. So, you know, that's another thing, you know, out of a whole clutch, you know, obviously some dragons will get the short end of the stick and you never know how they're gonna be till you know, you own them for about a year, but you love her just the same. She's got a nice, you know, little belly on her. Um, she really likes her dubias, you know, blue horned worms, but, She's got the cutest face ever, and those eyes, like she'll spot you, she'll do a whole, 
she'll turn those, she'll be looking at you like her pupil will turn all the way around to look at you, but she's awesome. And I would, you know, never get rid of her. I, I mean, I'm not comfortable. I wouldn't even be comfortable even breeding her unless she uh, really put on some size and all of a sudden got a growth spurt. But I don't see it happening, but there's always still hope. She's super tame though. If I had any kids over or anything, she'd probably be the first dragon I would, uh, you know, let them handle because she's really easy going. I don't have to worry about her snapping or anything. And uh, she's actually housed right now with uh, Lily because she was in with Mars and Mellow, but because she, her growth got stunted, you know, she was too little. She was kind of getting bullied around. So that's something you got to keep an eye on. You know, they start stepping on each other's heads. You know, if they were in a spot that she was in, they'd kick her out of it. You know, I had to feed her separately. So we moved her in with Lily and they're exactly about the same size. They seem to be getting along. They're both eating and around the same temperament. So just keep that in mind. But, you know, she's got some beautiful patterns, you know, down the middle of her spine. She even got these nice dark, you know, spots all the way down her spine. They're like black. And she's also got some tiger barring going on too, but I'm waiting for her to go through a full body shed. I mean, it's been months, so um, looks like she's starting to finally go through it now. But you know, once once I once I have her, she doesn't really uh, she's not gonna fight me or move much. So, and you know, maybe people say, oh, you're not giving her enough calcium, or she's not getting UV light. Well, if that was the case, then um, Lily wouldn't be growing. So. Believe me, I, I just think it's just the way her genetics are. But we love her just the same. And uh, she's uh, she also had a little mishap here on her finger. It's called skin retention when they start shedding. She couldn't get the skin off of the nail, so the skin started growing over the nail. And I think it was causing her a little bit of discomfort. So. I wouldn't recommend doing this, but what I had to do was I soaked it and we were able to get the skin off uh, with a tweezer and obviously I consulted my vet. I've seen him do it and he said, you know, I'm sure you can handle it now. But if you're first time, you should just take them to a vet. So every time you take a dragon out, you give them a bath once a week. Make sure you just inspect all their extremities, their nails, their eyes, their ears. You know, kind of do a little checkup on them, make sure they're doing okay because if your dragon's showing signs, that they're not doing well, it, it, it could be too late. So always make sure you're checking them every week, you know, giving them a bath, cleaning them up. You know, the cleaner their habitat is, the cleaner they are, the less chance of them getting parasites or anything. So in the long run, it'll save you money by taking better care of them. So that's Mandarin. She's a little pygmy of the raptor reptiles, but we love her. She's kind of, she's going to be like the grandmother to all the dragons. So she's going to be my little caretaker when the eggs hatch. All right, this is uh, Sleepyhead Mellow. I just had to wake her up. But um, she may be actually getting ready to lay a second clutch here soon. Um, she is a normal scale hypo het trans and she was given to me from Michael over at Weeby Reptiles. Um, she is now one year old this month and the only reason I bred her um, you know before she was you know around a year and a half was uh, she actually was ovulating so instead of her you know having those infertile eggs in her it's harder for them to get rid of them once they're infertile you know they're smaller and um, you know I had a male big bubba that was two years old so it just kind of worked out for the better. It's easier for them to get eggs out that are fertile. So not every dragon will ovulate, but some will once they hit around 350 grams. You could feel kind of under their left underbelly. There's like a little, you know, egg sac that starts developing. They'll start going crazy. They'll start, you know, glass surfing. You know, if they're in with other dragons, start stepping on them. Just acting all moody and if anyone's wondering what that spot is by her eye that's uh, some blue horned worm guts so she actually stopped eating for a couple days so usually once they stop eating you know 
that means the eggs are possibly developing and uh, she may be getting ready to lay. But I always found a trick that I can get them some blue, she'll get her some blue horned worms and she'll still go for them, which is great because it's high in fat and um, you know, it's, it's a lot of moisture for them. So they get a lot of water, especially when they're laying eggs, you don't want them dehydrated. The more hydrated they are, the easier they're gonna lay the eggs. So our first clutch was actually like really successful. We didn't lose any eggs. Um, we have 23 from her first clutch ever. So uh, you can see she'll even get like that teardrop shape down here. So though you get that teardrop, you know, sometimes when they're ovulating or when they're getting ready to lay. So it's been right about that time where she could be getting ready to lay a second clutch. So the eggs develop quickly too. So we just keep a close eye on her. Um, we love her and we're taking really good care of her, especially in between clutches. You know, you want to make sure that you get their weight back up because they lose too much weight. I mean, your dragon can actually die. So it's not for everybody to do. You got to have, I would recommend at least, you know, a couple years of experience before you decide you want to start breeding them because it does cost some money too. So it has to be a hobby that you're really into. Um, so like I said, this is my first, you know, rodeo with uh, breeding them. So. We'll see how it goes. I'm all ready and prepared. So once they hatch, obviously we'll keep you guys updated. But this is our little Raptor Reptiles Magic Maker right here. This will go down forever in the history book with that big belly. So I think there will be definitely some eggs in there. So I'm, I'm pressing lightly too. You never want to press too hard or squeeze the eggs. So, but uh, she's a beauty so let me get her she wants to get some beauty rest because she's gonna need all the strength she can get she has to push out that second clutch now this is my super fatty Mars as you can see she's also got the teardrop she's one year old but unfortunately her teardrop is due to obesity so we actually have her kind of on a you know, reduced diet right now. She's actually definitely, we got her too overweight. Like I like to spoil my dragons, but uh, you know, she's 550 grams. So it's a little bit too much. So, you know, they can develop some health issues if they're overweight, get like that fatty liver disease. So you love her so much, she's super tame. I mean, this poor girl's been through hell and back. So this is the last thing I want her to suffer again. So. You're only feeding her insects, you know, maybe once a week, twice if, she, you know, I feel it's necessary. So Mars, we also got her over from Weeby Reptiles. Um, he actually produced her, so I guess you could say she's definitely a full Weeby girl. Um, and she is a trans leatherback het hypo. Um, and, you know, she is such a big eater though. And she would always eat what, you know, I wouldn't be paying attention. She would eat what the other dragons would leave behind and then eventually it caught up, but she's got that, you know, Jabba the Hutt chin right there. So she, she's about the only one that has it here. So some dragons just have a, you know, voracious appetite and you just have to remember that as much as you love them and you want to get them fat, I mean, it can cause harm to them in the long run and she's at a year now where she's got to start eating you know I would say 80% greens and only 20% insects but she's definitely food aggressive um, but she's been handling it pretty good uh, she's actually lost about 20 grams so she's doing good but I want to show you she's also got that real nice um, brick red beard here it's like completely saturated and you can see she's really you know deep into trans she's super tame I mean she's been through so much um, you know she was sick right when I got her she had some parasites um, you know she actually got a toe bit by another dragon she got bit by juniper so she actually lost like this part of my finger like the tip she ended up actually uh, losing it I had to take her to the vet so that was a lot of you know that was kind of expensive um, so that's when I learned you know I shouldn't you know if they're showing aggression don't house them together so you know she had to go on antibiotics she had to you know bring her a couple follow-ups and whatever but 
Luckily the bone didn't get infected because reptiles are so much different than humans. Like the medicine and the treatment, they're cold blooded animals. So always in doubt, when in doubt, you just bring them to the vet because those are the professionals. So, uh, you know, any little cut on a dragon can get infected very quickly, get into their blood and bones. So I'm glad I, you know, took her and I had the money and she obviously made a full recovery <laughs> and she's such a little fatty and super tame but she's been through a lot so the last thing I want is for her to get another you know disease because I overfed her so but she's handling it well um, she's a little rowdy too I think she sees Salem in the back but she'll uh, she likes to chill out here sometimes on my chest or on my shoulder she really likes but she'll probably be the next dragon that I breed um, you know Maybe in the next six months. She hasn't ovulated on her own, so I'm not gonna, you know, force her and put her into brumation, but she's real tame. Like, she'll just chill here on dad, and, uh, you know, I can walk around and do whatever. Just for the video's sake, I'm trying to just keep her in one spot. But if your dragon wants to move around and you know they're not gonna jump off, like, I know she's not gonna jump off, if they fall from a big height like this, it could get hurt. But I know my dragon, I've had her for a year, she's not gonna jump off. She just, you know, once she just feels more secure up high. So, uh, yep, that's Mars. Now, this is Big Bubba, the original Raptor Reptile Bubba. He's uh, two years old, um, just turned two years old, and um, he's doing really well. I mean, he's like a tank, this guy. When I did, was like kind of inexperienced and was learning through everything, this guy just, you know, tank through everything no health issues ever um, he's like a little stallion right here so really cute guy he's got such a cute little face he's got a big we call him the bobblehead he's got like a big old head now he lost a little bit of weight because uh, he just bred he's kind of going through his little breeding episode here but you see he's still got a big belly um, he is a hypo leather back um, could be possible het trans we won't know until the eggs hatch but he's the one that we paired up with mellow in case anyone was wondering right now he's 630 grams he actually lost some weight just because once they get into that breeding mode that's kind of all they're um, concerned with so I'm keeping an eye out um, you can see here his tail you know he's still shedding very healthy um, dragon great specimen he is I think he's 21 inches long so he's a he's a pretty big big dragon so to pair him up with Mella I think it will be good you know they both kind of got the citruses going on as you could tell he's got some really cool like tiger going on here he's not really he was kind of ready for bed so he's not really fired up right now but he is bright and does these oranges will pop and same with the cameras it's hard but uh yeah he was my original and uh, doing great, really alert. He loves his blue horned worms. Um, he's maybe trying to get to the ladies too. But uh, yeah, that's big bubs. All right guys, thanks for watching the colony update. Um, hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, so that was just, you know, real quick to see how they've progressed. So you can go back and watch the old video. We have a lot of cool videos coming your way, you know, the next couple of months. Um, Kate's going to be doing a couple of exclusives. You know, I'm going to stick with the colony updates. Uh, I think I still have one more feeder video that I promised you guys on the superworms. I believe those are coming next week for my shipment. So I'll do that video. And then, like I said, I've you know, been getting some likes now, a couple little comments here and there. I'd like to see a little bit more interaction. I kind of don't really know. I got, you know, some more subscribers than when I started. I literally started with zero. So, you know, it's going up slow, which is cool. But I'm here to help you guys tell you everything that I know experience. If I can't get you an answer, I'll, uh, you know, ask my vet or any experts that I know to try and help you out the best I can. But, uh... Yes, yeah, stay tuned. We'll be bringing you guys some awesome videos. Don't forget, you know, rate, comment, subscribe. Any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Like I said, if I can't, I'll find somebody who can. So uh, stay tuned.
Alright, so the baby rack is now complete and I was pretty much optimal for them to breed. Um, so the thermostat on the outside is not the most